My name is Alfonso Vargas. I am a full professor of the University of Huelva in Spain. And it, it was an honor for me to participate in, in this textbook written by professors Pelicano and Kiesulov um, about the strategic vision of the company. The purpose of this uh, short clip is to show you the main guidelines of one of the appendix of this textbook devoted to ethical and social responsibility. Uh, the first thing that the students uh, have to understand concerning this topic is how to clear the terminological jungle uh, around this concept of ethics and social behavior. Uh, we will find words such as ethics, moral, values, corporate social responsibility, different kind of responsibilities companies have to deal with, um, stakeholders, shareholders, uh, triple bottom line, global reporting, different kind of standards, code of contact, ethical codes, ombudsman, etc. So all these kind of words are in, in a cloud, we could say, and it's our purpose to make you understand much better the differences between or among these uh, words, because sometimes they are used as synonymous, and they are connected, of course, but we have to uh, provide a clear picture about how to manage this kind of terminological jungle. But to do so, it's important, first of all, to make some questions to reflect about the current reality of business nowadays. For example, uh, what's the corporation responsible for? Just for maximizing profits? What do you think about? I don't think so. Who is the corporation responsible to? Who has the corporation to answer to? Just to shareholders? Think about that, please. I don't think so. Who is entitled to demand this responsibility? There are many agents around the company uh, being affected by the uh, company's actions. So this is another question to, to think about. Is the corporation responsible for its externalities, such as pollution, global warming, some illnesses, poverty, exploitation, uh, no respect to human rights, uh, labor abuses, child labor, etc.? So uh, we have to take into account this kind of responsibilities connected to this kind of uh, behaviors. And finally, has the corporation to face ethic issues? Of course, everyday managers have to face ethical issues, have to make decisions within the framework created by the law, but using their own values to decide what to do and to choose the most convenient alternative for the company. So, in this context, a new topic has uh, came up in the last uh, few years, which is uh, well known such as Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. And CSR today is one of the hottest topics, both in, in, in academia and in board of directors. CSR is the business issue of the 21st century, and it is no longer an option people embrace responsible corporations. So CSR has arrived to stay here with us. So this is the reason to go deeper within this concept and to understand much better its real uh, meaning. So you can find here a short definition of CSR. I think it's quite clear. CSR means abandoning the notion that a business only responsibility is making money and encouraging companies to adopt a mindset and culture that considers that relationships with all stakeholders. So this is a critical word, this is a critical concept, stakeholders. And this is our responsibility as managers today to make our best to create a certain room of uh, balance between the different uh, stakeholders' interests uh, which is uh, difficult many times, because usually they are contradictory. But why we are in this particular situation right now in business? So no doubt that 
the private sector plays a more central role in society than ever. So this means that people, citizens, have a great awareness of, the, of some uh, misbehaviors carried out by certain companies, by some abuses carried out by certain corporations. So for sure, uh, we have in mind some cases of scandals and corruption that uh, arises into the uh, newspapers around the world. Um, and, and this is why people, society, governments are more and more demanding. And, why, and this is why companies are expected to promote a more responsible behavior. So we were talking uh, about ethical issues. We have mentioned this word. CSR is a demonstration of an ethical management. It means going beyond the law voluntary. So this is why CSR means an ethical position. And this is why putting into practice CSR principles, we are dealing with this kind of uh, demands from society, citizens, and governments. But there are, of course, some drivers or inductors. In other words, why are corporations uh, involved in this process of being more responsible, of developing more responsible behaviors? The first driver we could say is that customers are demanding it. So we said a few moments ago that people are demanding, embracing uh, responsible corporations. At the same time, there are an increasing signs that business that do good for communities, for local societies, do well for shareholders. And there are several reasons, several uh, causes to understand uh, this uh, assessment. Responsible companies enjoy improved reputations, which bring benefits such as customers and employee loyalty, more stable revenues, and better recruitment uh, prospects. Uh, this means, in a nutshell, that social responsibility isn't just the right thing to do, it's good business. Uh, to provide you a more concrete uh, approach about the main drivers or inductors of CSR, it's important to mention um, a global initiative carried out by the United Nations, which is known as the UN Global Compact. And this Global Compact, promoted uh, by the United Nations, uh, is set up by 10 principles organized in four groups. Some principles related to human rights and how corporations have to respect human rights. Some principles related to labor, labor conditions, labor rights. Some principles, three as you can see, seven, eight, and nine, related to environment, um, encouraging uh, to become a more environmental friendly. And finally, the uh, principle number 10 is about corruption and how corporations have to uh, fight against corruption. So, taking into consideration all these uh, elements, let me, uh, let me use a quotation I like very much by Valdemar Oliveira Neto, which is, was the director of the Ethos Institute, which is very uh, interesting for our purpose today. This quotation is, CSR is the capacity of a company to listen to, to take care of, to understand, and to satisfy the legitimate expectations of the different actors who contribute to their development. There is a critical idea behind this quotation. It's the idea of balance. It's the idea of equilibrium. So CSR is all about of balance and equilibrium. Balance among internal and external stakeholders. As we know, companies have to deal with both internal and external stakeholders. And we have to find a certain room for satisfaction of all of them. Balance or equilibrium between short-term requirements and medium and long-term objectives. So of course, companies have to fulfill their immediate short 
uh, objectives, but at the same time, they have to follow a medium and long-term vision, and this is uh, important when talking about uh, corporate social responsibility and responsible behaviors. And finally, it's an exercise of balance because responsibility, social responsibility, CSR, has three different dimensions. Economic, social, and environmental dimensions. So this is the final exercise of balance we would like to refer to. To be more specific, you will find in this appendix a list of uh, actions uh, to incorporate in the uh, daily life of organizations to become a more responsible company. So this is a long list you will find in the appendix. Uh, so I think it's not necessary to repeat this long list here, but just to, to mention some of them, for example, it's important to donate a part of your profit, pro profits to your community to be much closer to your local community and to be recognized as a good, good citizen by your community. The implementation of financial policies that controls and that help to ensure your fiscal responsibilities and long-term uh, viability, comply with all the environmental regulations, even going beyond, of course, the law, as said before. Uh, practice the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Refrain from using goods or services produced by child or prison labor, etc., etc. You will find a more comprehensive list in this appendix. And a final comment. It's not enough to say, to declare to others, I am a responsible company. I am following CSR principles. It's important to demonstrate that this is like this. Uh, this means uh, that this is relevant to uh, be recognized by certain standards. Some standards have been created to uh, demonstrate this kind of behavior. For example, we have the SA8000, Social Accountability 8000. We have the AA1000. And we have, very recently, uh, ISO standard, ISO 26000, related to uh, CSR. At the same time, it's usual for this kind of corporation uh, being involved in the process of becoming a much more responsible organization to be recognized like, like that. The uh, creation and implementation of codes of conduct, of ethical codes, if you like, and there is a particular position in this kind of companies which is named Ombudsman, which is the uh, person appointed to take care of this code of contact of ethic codes and to be sure that this code is respected and implemented in a daily basis. So this is basically together with the implementation of internal audits to make sure about our progress in this field this is basically the context of this appendix. This is a short appendix which uh, finished with a final remark taken by Amartya Sen, Nobel Prize in Economics in 1998, which is a good, a nice manner to finish this explanation, this brief uh, introduction. Business ethics plays an important role in the progress of the economy because it promotes the protection of the environment, reinforces human rights, or the fight against poverty. Thanks a lot for your attention, and please go forward, go deeper in this field, because it's worth it. Thank you very much.